Hello everyone, welcome back to the classes. How are you all? I hope you all are good. You all are doing very well. So student, it's just that we have started with the new chapter in the last session that we were discussing about the soil. Exactly. That in that session, we have discussed about the soil profile. Then we have seen that we are having distinctive layer for that. And those layers are divided horizontally. That's why we are calling it as horizon A, horizon B, horizon C. Then we have seen that what is the humus weathering and then we have talked about soil erosion that what is the soil erosion and what are the effects of the soil erosion and how can we prevent that exactly we have discussed all such things now in this session student we are continuing with the same chapter because we have left some with top with some topics okay so that's a student we are going to see that which topics are left here so you can see it's the type of the soil we have to discuss like sandy, clay and loamy. Then we are going to discuss about the properties of the soil, percolation rate of water in soil, moisture in soil, absorption of water in soil and then soil and crops. So these all are the topics students that we are going to cover up in today's class. Okay, so now just let's start with the session because we have to discuss so many topics here. So first of all, student, if you remember that we have discussed something about soil. So soil is, uh, we know this thing that soil is something which is covering the upper more, uppermost part of the earth, upper surface of earth. Exactly. And it is having some of the components so that is the mineral, nutrients, water, Air. Now, student, these all are the components which is present in the soil. Now, on the basis of this component, student, that uh, we have find it out that the soil is of four types. That is the sandy, silt, clay, and it's like loamy soil. So, we have to see that uh, these three, four types of the soils are there and depending upon the type, like the components they are having. Okay. So, because of the presence of the components or the, the presence of the amount of these components present in different, different soil students, we have seen that the soil has been divided into four categories. That is the sandy soil, slit soil, and the clay soil, loamy soil. So, you can see some of the picture here. So, all of these four soil students having some different, different types texture and why they are having different texture so we'll see that because of the sub because they that is the reason behind that so we'll see that thing okay so now we are going to discuss first of all about the sandy soil so you can see students sandy soil means that which is having a scent like structure scent like structure students you, you can see that we are having the particles uh, that you can see that the particles are having air in them that means students whenever you can see that the scent is there and when you add that scent into the water so what we'll see that it gets sediments at the bottom of the uh, at the bottom of the water so the soil which we are having the texture of the scent that we call as the sandy soil now because that student that is the sandy soil we are having some of the like you can see that uh, it is also having some different properties how as it is having a texture which is the sandy in nature that is why sand texture that is why we are calling it as sandy soil and this sand this soil is somewhat dry that is you can see also that it do not contains water because when we dissolve it into the water even also students that it is not you can see that it is just settling at the bottom it is not dissolving with the water because of that student it is dry in nature and it is also light in nature light fine and students if we talk about the nutrient that what the content of the nutrient it is having it is having the lack of nutrients that is why student if you have ever noticed this thing that we don't use sandy soil or we don't use sand for growing crops because it do not contain water it do not contain nutrients and if it is not having nutrients or the water so how we how it is going to maintain the uh, agriculture process students Exactly, because we know this thing that for the agriculture, we need a kind of the soil which is having the water in it. It is having nutrients, good amount of nutrients, good amount of humus as well. And we so that it could help in the growing of crops. But as we can see here that the sandy soil is having a texture of sand. That's why we are calling it as sandy soil, which is dry in nature. And it is also having lack of nutrients. And if all these properties are present in sandy soil, so this soil can't be used for 
the agriculture process because student in this we are not having nutrients and even though you will not find out the good amount of humus as well if it, all these components are not present in the soils that means this soil is not good for not good for growing crops because the component which is required for growing crops so that we can get a good amount of crops or the good quality of the crops it is not having all such properties so this is a sandy soil now if we talk about the different soil that is the clay soil or you can say that the clay soil students so you can see that they are having some kind of particle like they are having some kind of uh, solid structure as you can see that uh, like a solid kind of structure or you can say some kind of rocks you can say not exactly rocks because rocks are very harder in nature but that is the soil only which is soft in nature but it just that they are present in the form of soil uh, like you can say that the heavy soil because of that student that it is having some kind of structure it, uh, it is having very less a uh, let like you can say that the less space between their particles fine and this clay soil is heavy soil type that benefits from the high nutrients clay soils remain wet and cold in winter and dry out in summer so that's the case about the clay soil students and even though that uh, they are not you can see that uh, when the particles are you can say that the particles of the soil are very close to each other that they are forming some kind of solid structure so that means they are having very less space between the particle because of that student they are not not well aerated that means the amount of air in it is not proper but it is having a good amount of it is having a good amount of nutrient and as well as the humerus and not humor humus okay then if we see that it is like it can contain or it can remain wet that means student it is it is having a good amount of absorption of water as well absorption of water so this is the clay soil students that means it can also helpful for the growth of the plants because it is having a good amount of nutrients and humus it is having a good property that it can absorb water so because of that student it can increase that it can maintain the growth of the plant so that is the clay soil student because what happened it is a kind of the heavy soil which is having a high amount of the nutrients and the humus in it and but the thing is that that the particles are close to each other in this case so that is why they are having less space and they are not well aerated that means they are not having good amount or the proper amount of air present in it but because of the good amount of nutrient and humus present in it they can absorb good amount of water they promote the growth for the plants okay Okay, so that student, if you compare the clay soil with the sandy soil, so what you can see that the sandy soil is not the type of soil which can absorb good amount of water because its texture is very. You can see that it is not like that which is going to dissolve or which is getting absorbed or or who is getting the like you can say that it is not absorbing the water. So that's how student that sandy soil is also not having the good amount of nutrients and humus. That is why it is not good for the yielding crop. But the clay soil you can use for that purpose. okay but it just that student as we know this thing that for growing crops we require proper amount of water proper amount of air proper amount of nutrient and humus but this clay soil is not well aerated because of that student it will not help that much growth for the plant but if we see for the loamy soil the third type of soil you can see that it is very wet in nature wet in nature that means it uh, it is having a good absorber of water good absorber of water and in the loamy soil student it is having a good amount or you can say that it is having a good amount of humus as well uh, humus and nutrients and it is also well aerated well aerated that means the amount of air is also good in it that means loamy soil is made with the balance of the three main type of soil that is the sand silt and clay soil as a general rule rule loam soil should consist of equal part of all these three soil types because student as we can see that in the sand soil that it is having some other you can see here that because of its texture that it is dry in nature as well and it is like but it is having lack of nutrients but that lack of nutrients student you can see that it is fulfilled by the clay soil because it is having a good amount of nutrient and humus and it is it just that it is not well aerated but as the slit one is the well aerated so what happens to Student, that 
the soil, uh, the loam soil is formed when the three types of the soil, sand, silt and clay, when these three are mixed up together in an equal amount of each other. So that's how student we get the loamy soil. And this loamy soil is a good absorber of water and it is also having good amount of humus and nutrients and it is also well aerated. That means student this soil can be used for the, uh, for, for the good growth of the plants because it is having all of those properties which is required for the growth of the plants. Fine student. So what we have seen till now that what are, that we have seen that the soil is having four part four type that means on the dependence upon the type of the properties they are having. It's just that sand is the very dry kind of but the uh, clay we can see that it is somewhat of the heavy soil which is having less space between the particles of the soil and the loamy soil is made up when we mix all these three uh, three soil together in an equal equal part so that we are getting loamy soil. Okay. Now we are going to discuss about the properties of soil that what could be the property. So first of all, it is the texture. The texture of the soil depends upon the relative amount of these particles, like the particles of the soil, that what type of the particle of soil is present. So it gives the texture to the soil. As we can see student in the sand, that the particles are of the dry texture. So you can see that the, uh, that you can say that the sand, sandy soil is a kind of the dry soil. But if you see clay and loamy, so they are having some kind of hydration in it because of their texture of particles. Fine students, so the very first point is the texture of the soil. Second, absorption of water. That means how much amount of the water getting absorbed by them. So water holding capacity in different type of soil is different. Exactly as we can see that the scent, it is not a good absorber of water. It is dry in nature. Whereas clay can absorb the water, but the loamy is the one which is a very good absorber of water. That means it, it can hold water very well. So the absorption of the water student, so it depends upon the type of the soil which we are having and that is how that they are holding the different different amount of the water. Fine. Now moisture. Texture decides the water holding capacity of the soil. As we know this thing student that the sand which is dry in nature, which is having dry texture, that means it will not absorb the water and if it is not absorbing the water, that means student it is not having moisture in it because student water result into the moistureness. It results into the moisture in the soil and when the soil is not able to absorb water or when it is not able to keep, hold water, that means student it will not having the ability to uh, to show some kind of moisture. That is why loamy, uh, loamy soils are having more moisture as compared to the sandy soil because they are drier and they are wetter in nature. Fine. Color. Soils are of different colors. Obviously, student, we have seen this thing that the, all of the soils are having their different, different colors. It depends upon their texture, depends upon the type of the particles of the soil. And it also depends upon the absorption of water. If it is having the absorption of the water, moisture is there. So you can see it is having some kind of like water, water will be there. Na? So it will having some different color. Okay. Percolation rate. Percolation rate students, we are going to discuss after the properties of the soil. So don't get worry about it. It's just that percolation rate, you can just understand like a passing rate. Passing rate. That means how much amount of water is passing through the pores of the soil. So that is called as the percolation rate. So students for the different soil, we are having different percolation rate. Soil contains air. Yes, soil contains air, but it's just that some of them are well aerated, but some of them are, are not well aerated. So all these are the properties of soil. Fine. Now, if we see that what is the percolation rate of water in soil? So percolation is the process of filtering liquid while passing through a filter. So it is the process when a filtering liquid is passing through a filter. So we call it as the percolation. So what happened? Rainfall seeps underground through percolation where water travels downwards through the tiny spaces between rocks and soil particles. The water eventually saturates the underlying rock much like water fills the tiny holes of the sponge. This helps to replenish aquifers under the ground. What happens student that the percolation as I have told you that it is the passing rate of the water. So whenever there is the rainfall so that rainfall or the water of the rain gets percolated through the uh, you can say that water travels through the tiny spaces which is present in between the rock and the soil particles or through the soil or, or through the pores of the soil so that they are getting so you can see that they are reaching to the uh, you can say to the soil to the underlying rock as well 
and so that is called as the percolation process now how is the percolation process or the how the percolation rate of the water uh, is different for the different soil how see students as you can see here that the more amount of water is present here more amount of water that means the percolation rate will be high that means more amount of water is getting absorbed through the soil and that, that water is passing from the from the pores of the soil to the uh, you can say to the uh, near to the underlying rock but as you can see here that it is having the shallow standing water that means it is having the less amount of water because of that the percolation is also low because percolation is what that means the passing of the water uh, through the pores or through the space between the rocks and the soil particles but when the water is less so how the percolation rate will be high exactly because percolation is something that the amount of the water getting passed through it when the water is less so the percolation is also less no standing water saturated so you can see percolation is zero because you can see student when there is a very less amount of water so how the water is getting passed through the uh, through the spaces that is how it is zero so that means student that the percolation rate depends upon the amount of the water present there if it is having more amount of the water so the percolation rate will be high and if the percolate uh, the water is less so the percolation rate will be low so percolation rate of soil is used to determine the absorption rate of the soil that that means how much the soil uh, you can say that the how much of water is getting absorbed by the soil that means if the percolation is high that means absorption of water is high percolation that means passing of water is more that means absorption of water is more fine uh, because what we have seen that the percolation is is a process in which the water filtered or the water passes from the spaces present between the rocks and the soil particles and when the percolation is high so what will happen that the absorption of the water increases so that means student percolation rate of the soil it determine that how much water is getting absorbed by the soil fine so the rate of percolation is the ratio of the amount of water in milliliters to the percolation time in minutes that means percolation rate is equals to amount of water that how much water is getting absorbed by the soil which we calculate in milliliter divided by the percolation time which we take in minutes that means student if i say that this much of water if it is 100 ml and it is taking for example 10 minutes to per to percolate through this that means student the percolation rate for it would be 100 divided by 10 that is the 1 ml per minute that means 1 ml of water is passing through it you can say uh, so not exactly one it is 10 ml that means 10 ml of water is passing per minute through the soil so that's how student you can calculate the percolation rate because percolation rate tells you that how much water is getting absorbed that means student in one minute you can see that 10 ml per minute that means in one minute soil is absorbing 10 ml of the water fine and when it is absorbing more amount of water then it will having the more percolation rate so that's how student you can see that when the water will be more so the percolation rate will, percolation will be high okay so that's how student you can see that if it is uh, absorbing more and more water so that means that water is a, is a good absorber of water okay that means that soil is a good absorber of water so that's how student percolation rate is also important property of the soil that means student if a if a sandy soil is not able to absorb more and more water that means its percolation rate will not be high but if the soil is there which is absorbing good amount of water in less time also so you can see that the percolation rate will be high for that okay that means it can absorb more amount of water so this is the percolation rate now if we see moisture in soil and the sea student moisture or in soil directly depends upon the amount of water present in it amount of water present in the soil if the amount of the water is more so the moisture will be more if the amount of the water is less so the moisture will be less for example student if we take the example of sandy soil so the sandy soil are generally dry in nature that means they do not absorb more amount of water or you can say that they do not hold good amount of water and in that student that is why when they are having not good amount of water 
that is why it is dry in nature and because of that student there is no moisture it is not having any moisture in it but if we talk about clay soil or loamy soil so that are, that is our student they are having amount of water present in them and that is why they are having moisture so moisture in uh, in soil is the amount of the water present in the soil moisture in the soil can be removed by setting up the following experiment so we'll see that experiment as well okay absorption of water in soil the amount of water absorbed by the soil when water is poured into the soil that means uh, you can say that the water is absorbing by the soil so you can see student that if you have poured 10 ml of water and it is totally getting absorbed by the soil so we call it as the absorption of water and you can see here the amount of water absorbed by the soil when water is poured into the soil is called absorption capacity or absorption of water by soil that means how much soil is like how much water is getting absorbed by the soil it is called as the absorption capacity maybe some soil is absorbing more but maybe some soil is absorbing less so it depends and for that i am having one video that how we can do this thing so just look at here Experiment. Absorption of water by soil. Take a beaker, funnel, filter paper, few samples of soil, and a dropper. First take a filter paper, fold it and place it in a funnel. Place the funnel in a beaker. Fill the funnel with 50 grams of soil. With the help of a measuring cylinder, measure 100 milliliters of water. Pour the water on the soil with the help of a dropper. Pour the water in such a way that it spreads over the entire surface of soil. Keep pouring the water until the water just starts dripping from the funnel. Now measure the quantity of water left in the flask. Let us assume that it is 60 milliliters. So we conclude that water absorbed by 50 grams of soil is equal to 100 milliliters minus 60 milliliters, which gives us 40 milliliters. Considering, see, student, what he has done, like he is checking that uh, the like uh, which type of soil is absorbing with uh, how much amount of the water. So they have taken the different different type of soil, and what they are doing that they are checking that how much water is getting absorbed by the soil. Okay, so they have taken one beaker. One, uh, one funnel and one uh, filter paper. So they put one filter paper into the funnel and they pour some of the soil over it and they just start dropping water over it. So what happens to it? If you are pouring 100 ml of water over that soil and after all this process, if you are getting 60 ml in the beaker, that means student out of 100 ml, uh, you can say 40 ml is absorbed by the soil because 60 ml you are getting in this beaker again. That means 40 ml of water is absorbed by this soil that's how student you can see that how much amount of water getting absorbed by soil okay from the fact that one milliliter of water weighs one gram the water absorbed as a percentage of the weight of the soil is equal to 40 grams divided by 50 grams multiplied by 100 which gives us 80 percent the experiment is repeated for different soil samples. So we can conclude which soil absorbs the maximum water, which absorbs the least. Generally, we conclude that the rate of absorption of water is higher in clay soil than sandy soil. So students from this experiment, what we have seen, okay, look at here that we have taken the sample of sandy soil, okay, and then we have taken the sample of clay soil, 
fine. Now, student, what you have done is that you have taken one one beaker for both of them. Okay, one one beaker. Now, in that beaker, student, you are putting one funnel. Okay, and in that funnel, you have poured some clay soil, and in the another funnel, students, you have you have taken some. You can see filter paper is there. You have taken sandy soil. Now, in both of them, students, you are adding hundred hundred ml of water. Hundred hundred ml of water. See, student. In that case, what happened in the sandy soil? You will be absorbing that eighty ml of water is passing through it. That means it has just absorbed twenty ml of water. But in the clay soil, you just getting the forty ml of water. That means it has absorbed sixty ml of water. So on the depending of the amount of the water absorbed by the soil, we can say that which of the soil is absorbing more amount of water. So sandy soil is absorbing only twenty mL of water, and the clay soil is absorbing sixty mL of water. So we have just taken one example. Okay. So if the absorption of the water is more in the case of the clay soil, that means student clay soil is a good absorber of water, which we have seen already. Exactly. So it's just that student absorption of water in soil. It is just that the amount of the water absorbed by the soil when you are pouring the water into the soil, and that we call as the absorption capacity. That means student clay soil. Is having the more absorption capacity as compared to the sandy soil, and that's how student you can do this experiment for different different type of soils, and then you can observe which is which is having the good absorption capacity and which is having the less absorption capacity. Fine. So with that, we have seen that how the water is getting absorbed in the soil. Now, soil and crops. That means which type of soil can be used for the which type of the uh, growth of the crops. Okay. So if we see that the loamy soil. clay soil and the sandy soil so it consists of sand clay and silt as we have already discussed that the loamy soil is the mixture of three of the soil and they are mixed up together in the equal amount it contains a lot of air as we have already seen that it is well aerated fine and if we see their properties that they are rich in humus and fertile retains water very well contains clay in tiny amount porous it is also porous in nature and we can grow cereals like wheat gram sugar cane jute and vegetables in on the loamy soil now if we see the clay soil so it contains fine clay particles drain water easily because we have already seen that it is a good absorber of water good absorber of water and then it is somewhat sticky in nature very little air present as we have already discussed that it is not well aerated not well aerated it is rich in organic matter that means it contains good amount of humus and it can be used for the growing cereals like wheat gram and paddy and then lentils and pulses that means it can be used for the growing such type of crops now sandy soil it contains little clay and more sand it is porous in nature and it is having a very less amount of water absorber that is water retaining capacity is low a lot of air is present in it low in nutrient content because it is having the very less amount of humus in it and it can be used for the growing cactus melon and coconut that means it can be used for such type of crops which require less amount of water for the growth exactly student because it is not having a good a good capacity for, for for retaining water that is why it is used for the growing of such crops which require less amount of water but as you can see that the loamy soil and the clay soil can absorb good amount of water that is why they, we are using such soil for the growth of the cereals like wheat gram pulses which require lots of amount of water for their better growth so that's how student depending upon the properties and the depending of the texture of the soil we can see that which type of soil can be Use for the grow for growing the different different type of crops as well. Fine. Now there is one question that water holding capacity is the highest in which of the soil? So you can see here that is the clayey soil is having the more uh, highest capacity of holding water. Fine. So with that, student, we have completed our chapter. now it's your duty to watch the videos carefully and what you have to do is if you are having any doubt any queries there you can post your question on public or private forum of ask ideas and you will be getting answer from the expert side and with that student we have completed the chapter and thank you so much for watching the video and keep learning from ask ideas